Hello YouTube RJ. I have to admit it, as bad as I'd rather not. My name is RJ. And I'm an addict. Once again, I have been unable to stay off AliExpress, and because of that, the lab has packages. It was not always like this. Before I retired and started this YouTube channel, I was fine. I can only imagine that the post office, FedEx, and UPS probably believe I'm some kind of Chinese spy. Two days go by that I don't get some package in the mail through one of the carriers from China. Some days I get many. I can only hope we find what's in them useful in the lab and worth what I spent on them. There's only one way to know and that is to get them on the bench, open them up, and see if each of them appears to be trash or treasure. Well, here we are again with lots of junk to open up. Let's do this. We're gonna set this aside for just a few minutes while we look at some of this other stuff. So let's see what we got. Okay. <clears throat> Here's what we've got. Let me see if we can clear this up a little bit. Gonna get that camera. Oh, get that camera where it's getting a better picture for you. We're uh Sure. Come on, RJ, you can open this. I know you can do it. There we go. We have a inexpensive USB power monitoring device. USB-C. So let's give this thing a try if we can. Let's uh, let's grab my soldering iron here. Actually, I think I'll leave that on. Undo this and plug this in right here. Plug this in right here. And not the biggest image you've seen ever seen. If I get up here, adjust focus so we can read it. It says we're 20.29 volts, claims we're pulling no current, which maybe this is so low a current it's not showing that, but let's uh, give it a reason to pull some current, see what happens. Oh yeah, 1.3 amps, 2.1 amps, 50 watts. So it's just a diagnostic tool for how much you're pulling and what's going on across your USB-C devices. So that looks like it works pretty good. We see our power dropping off, our amperage falling back as, as we hit our temperature. She's going to settle in, and we're going to be pulling currently only about a third of an amp, about six, seven watts. So let's turn it off now. Apparently, this only pulls so little power. This is not even recognizing that I'm pulling power. So that appears to work pretty good. We can we can rack that up to it works, and I'll get a better opportunity to try it out on some different devices. 
So next, let's see what we got. You know, I had something charging that I was wondering how quickly it's charging, how much power is going in. So now I know. Oh, okay. I know what this is. This is some MTEC flux. You've seen me use this pen many times. We've talked about it. Just wanted to make sure I kept some on hand. So I went ahead and ordered a little more. Now this is kind of a, looks cloudier, greener, amber tint more than that. It's funny they're supposed to be the same thing. Hmm. Hopefully they, hopefully it's going to work well for me too. So I just picked up a tube of that. And then what do we have here? We've got, uh, we've got the yellowish oranges. I call it China tape, China packing tape. Whenever I see this, or sometimes it's a little brighter yellow, I know that something's come from China. And I got a story I'm going to tell you at the end of this video about that. I'll tell you a story about how <clears throat> I got a package that way one day, and it led to me having kind of an epiphany. But sometimes when you think you're doing the right thing, and you're doing something, you know, you're doing something that you think is good, and you find out that you're not, it can be disheartening. Okay, what we have here is a 640 piece, two watt, 1% resistor pack, similar to the other one I ordered. It's not as nice. They didn't pack them individual. Kind of thought they did because it looked like it. What I was wanting was this, and that's what I thought I was getting. This has been the kit I've been using recently. I really like it. The stuff's packed in individual little bags and marked for me. Uh, it wasn't in order. I had to sort it myself. But I didn't mind that. It's very handy to have. I thought I was getting a 2 watt version of that, but what I've got is a, a mound of resistors in a plastic box. So I will have to do my own sorting and such with that, but still was very price efficient for the for what I got just for resistors to play around on the bench with during experimenting and stuff. So now, last but not least, is this little jewel. So let's take a look at what's in here, because I know what's in here. It's the only one thing it could be. The only one thing I had to order right at the moment that should be here, that would be this size. And that is a hot plate, a PCB pre-warmer slash SMD soldering hot plate. And you may have seen me in videos use my big uh, griddle, but I've always wanted to get one of these that were actually designed for it, temperature controlled and such. And I, as usual, on AliExpress, this popped up and the price was right. And so I couldn't stand it. So I bought it. I've got a problem, as I said earlier. I don't seem to be able to help myself from ordering this stuff. So... I want to try this thing out. What I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to back this up here. I don't know if it would be better to turn it this way onto this camera, probably not. Probably the best thing to do is let me move this camera for you. Okay, so I've readjusted the cameras, <clears throat> turned this back off and let it start cooling back down. A lot of thermal mask on this thing. The mass really slows down the cooling down. I went ahead and got some old solder paste that's expired probably not going to work well and i didn't really try to even be neat with it i just kind of blobbed a little here smeared it around put a little capacitor on and my idea is we're going to set this up here and we're going to see if we can solder that not sure the best way to capture this i think 
If we move this camera here, we won't be able to see the temperature and what it's saying it is. But I will, what I'm going to do is try to bring it down as close as I can without cooking it from the heat, where you can still see the temperature get close. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this camera in very close. Try not to cook it, but try to get a good image of that part. So let me see what, what I think I might be able to do here. So can we get, where's our image going to be the best on this from? Probably from like right there. It's probably the best we're going to be able to do right there. So hopefully I don't cook my camera. So let's go ahead and turn this thing up to, I don't know, 230. Let's see how long it takes to flow this. There's 230. So we're going to see how long it takes to get up the temperature. See if we can get a good image of this flowing. I'll speed through as much of this as I can. There she goes. Okay, I shut her off. When I edit, I'll put up the time it took to actually get there. I'll look on the video and actually calculate it out and put it up for you. But that's not bad. Brought her up to temp. Got a good blob and an attempt to tombstone a little on that, but it didn't. And a bunch of solder balls, but it's, it's expired solder. So our solder paste, so I assumed I wouldn't get a good job out of it. As far as the device, this is a UYUE, U946C preheat station. My big thing is I wanted to make sure it could get hot enough not just to preheat, but also to actually reflow solder for me. And it will. It's got a pretty good sized surface, so I don't have to worry about little boards. You can buy the very little USB ones. I didn't want that. I wanted one that when I do, you know, good sized boards I can do. So, so far, so good. We won't know until we've used it for a while, but the build looks pretty good. I'm going to have to say lots of uh, aluminum for mass. I'll turn it back on here and turn the temperature down. So it starts cool, continues to cool off instead of heating up. Turn her way down to where she won't heat up. Twenty degrees C is below it, room temperature, so that should do it. And then it's going to go to the temperature. You'll see it's very slow to cool. It doesn't cool real quickly. It ramps down. See, we're hardly a few degrees C below where we were when we turned her off. Let's watch. I've been. I was checking with the IR camera while I was at it, and it was uh, pretty well accurate. It was pretty well tracking with the IR camera, so it seems to be fairly accurate. There is a calibration it says here. We can calibrate it, so I could calibrate it, and, and I might do that. It looks pretty close as it is right out of the box. But you can see it's not cooling off really super fast. There's quite a block of metal there to hold thermal mass that keeps us from you know, suddenly spiking or suddenly going down. And that, that allows, makes it where the heater doesn't have hot spots. When I look on the cam, it's pretty even. It doesn't have any real hot spots. You know, the center is, is maybe a couple degrees warmer, big spot in the major center in here. And out here might be a degree, maybe two at most difference. But for the most part, there's enough mass there to keep everything consistent, which is what you want. You don't want thermal stresses on your stuff. You don't want it heating up much faster here and over here. It's many degrees cooler and it's ramping slower and that's putting stress on things. You don't want that. So that's where having a, a big chunk of metal comes in and helps. So with that, not a whole lot that I can do more at this point. I'll do a follow-up if I find more information on this. Maybe there's quirks I don't like or it fails or something I find I don't like or bugs in the uh, firmware. Any of that? 
I'll make sure and let you guys know so you can make a good buying decision if you decide you need something like this. Okay, I promised you a story earlier in the video. And even though the video is running a little bit long, I didn't want to lie to you, so I want to go ahead and try to give you that story. Thought I'd get outside the lab for this story, and being Florida, of course, I've got a storm rolling in. It's kind of nice out here. It's not 95 degrees because of the weather. So anyway, quickly to try to make this short. Many, many years ago, over 20 years ago, I was doing Christmas lighting controllers, as most of you know. And I, I was doing quite a volume of them. I would order PCBs in large quantities. And I was trying to do the right thing. I was trying to uh, be a good American and all our manufacturing stuff was going overseas. I decided I would order my PCBs in America and I knew they were gonna cost more and I looked into it and I found what looked like a really good place to order my PCBs. They had a nice website and they showed, you know, their manufacturing facility up in the uh, Northern states of uh, America. And so I would make my orders and, you know, they would manufacture them and send them to me or so I thought. And we were, working together i had a rep there and we'd worked together for probably a good year and a half when one day my order didn't come when expected and i reached out to them and there had been a mistake in putting the order through my boards had not been built so because of that they assured me they'd put a rush on it they'd get them made they'd get them to me everything would be great a week goes by and i get a delivery from dhl which was not normal normally i've got my stuff from ups and it was in a nice box and regular box taped up with typical packing tape and you'd open it and you know it had their their little logo of their company and their little flyers in there and such this box was a cheaper looking box and it had yellow tape kind of a yellow orange tape on it which i recognize as what i call chinese tape took the box and i opened it up and sure as the world my pcbs were in there they were packed different and there was no flyers in there from the company or anything and I realized that this had come from overseas. And it occurred to me that maybe my company really wasn't making my boards, they were ordering them overseas and just marking up because I was paying about almost twice what I could go overseas and get circuit boards for. So I called my rep and he kind of heed and hauled and went around with me and I finally just, I said, look, I got my order. It's got a label on it from China. It's uh, very clearly from China. You're ordering my boards from China. What's the deal? And he admitted to me that they were a PCB manufacturer, but they hadn't been manufacturing PCBs in many years and that they had switched over to ordering them. They could order them from China cheaper than they could make them. They were ordering them from China. They were marking them up and they were selling them. And so I learned my lesson that no matter what you do in electronics, it's really hard not to deal with China directly one way or another. You can pay people more money for stuff, but you don't necessarily get it from America. He explained that because of EPA regulations and such that pretty well PCB manufacturing in the United States pretty well done away with. The cost is prohibitive. You just can't afford to do it. And therefore they couldn't compete on a world market and therefore pretty well everybody had closed up and weren't making PCBs in the United States anymore. Just a little story to show you that as much as I like to support our country, it's very hard to do so when it comes to electronics. Uh, China pretty well owns the market. Just about everything we buy, no matter where we get it from, comes from China. Just keep that in mind when you're, you're, you're looking at all this cheap Chinese stuff. And the reason that I'm telling this story is because I get email here and there about buying Chinese stuff, why don't I buy America? Uh, really where would I get this stuff in America from other than buying people who are reselling it. Hey, thanks for hanging in here. I know this was a long video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope, hope it was entertaining. Hope you saw something you liked. As always, I'll put the, try to find links to the stuff. Um, if not, I'll at least give you a description of what to search AliExpress with, and I'll give you the cost I paid for it in the description. So thanks a lot. Hope to see you in another video.